So that's out of the way. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Fred to give a quick intro because this presentation is also done in conjunction with SCORE. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Fred Engel. I've been a SCORE mentor for eight, nine, ten years, whatever it is. I just want to thank you for attending. Uh, we're really pleased to be working with the Chamber on these Lunch and Learns. And it's, uh, we've been doing this, I guess, four or five years. Just quick quick news about SCORE. SCORE is a organization, it's a national organization. We have a Lancaster chapter and it's, it's made up of vol volunteers, primarily business executives who have experience uh, and just want to give back. So primarily what we do is offer free mentoring services. Uh, uh, we have different personnel and different media to help. Uh, and we also do educational programs. This, today is what we're doing is one of the educational programs, not only do we work with clients, but we also work with our mentors who uh, maybe don't have a background in, 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 in finance. So it should be extremely interesting. And uh, I've told Lou and Abby, I've heard this seminar three or four times and every time I go through it, I learn something new. So welcome and I'll turn it back to you, Abby. Yeah, and we're excited for today's presentation. Lou, if you want to just jump right in and get started, I think everyone's excited to hear what you have to say. Sure, I'll be happy to. Um, I'm delighted to be with you guys today. I, I really mean that. That's not just a throwaway line. I've been doing small business uh, uh, consulting, counseling, uh, especially on business financial management for many, many years. And I, I'm absolutely delighted anytime I have a chance to talk with small business entrepreneurs, owners about that aspect of their business management process. Um, you're all muted right now, but I'm very happy for this to be an, an, an interactive discussion uh, process as we go along rather than saving questions and answers for the end. So anytime you want to shout out something or ask a question or make an observation, you can unmute yourself and and come in and I'll be happy to, uh, to accept the interruption and, and, and deal with your question or your observation. So don't hesitate to do that. Uh, I, want, I want to start this workshop today by giving you a personal observation uh, that's based on more years of experience than I really want to admit. Um, I'm, I'm I'm old as dirt, you know, I, I, I had a 35 year career with uh, Armstrong World Industries in the treasurer's office. And uh, one of the things that I did there was work with Armstrong's distribution system, building material, wholesale distributors and, and, and commercial contractors, and floor covering contractors, ceiling system contractors and retailers to help them in their business financial management process. And after retiring, I've, I've been uh, a volunteer with SCORE for almost 25 years now. I didn't plan it that way, it just worked out that way. Uh, and, and, and I averaged maybe 40 clients a year over 25 years, so you do the math. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of clients I've worked with over the years. So my, my observation is this, um, I think that the vast majority of small business owners, entrepreneurs are better at managing their operations, their marketing and sales process, their advertising and promotion process, their human resources management process, et cetera, et cetera, more than they are their business management process, their financial, excuse me, management process. Uh, if there is any universal weak link in small business entrepreneurship, it's business financial management in my experience. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it, because if you're a large corporation, you can afford to hire chief financial officers and armies of accountants and bookkeepers and people in the treasurer's office and so forth and so on to help senior management of the business in, in that aspect of, of the overall business management process. But in the small business world, you can't afford to do that. You got to wear all the hats yourself. 
you know, you got to do it yourself. And, 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 and business financial management, uh, in my experience, is, is the difference between good, better, best. It's the difference between those who really, really excel in terms of profitability and success and those who are in the camp of also run, you know, or, or failure. I don't know whether you know it, but there are about 6 million new business startups per year in the United States. There are also about 6 million businesses that go out of business every year in the United States. Uh, and I can tell you, they wouldn't be going out of business if they weren't, if they were profitable. If they were profitable and growing successful, they'd, they'd be staying in business for the most part. So you got 6 million people that are not making it going out of business. So that's why the small business statistics in the United States stay at about 26, 28 million year after year after year or a graph, you know, in, in a hospital chart, looks like the patient is dead. It doesn't change much, you know, in terms of, of, of small business growth. It's even declining a little bit right now in the last five, seven years, according to the statistics I've seen. Uh, so I, I, I think that, <sighs> The way I think about it is that the language of business is numbers and money. It's the universal language of business. And, and it's your job to learn how to understand and speak the language. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to be so damn good at it, you can teach it, you know, but you, you have to be able to understand it and speak it. If you can't, you're going to be like an American doing business in a town and hundred miles outside of Moscow and you can't speak Russian. You know, how do you think that would work for you? Uh, and, 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 and it's something in my experience that you can't delegate. You can't say, oh, I wasn't any good at math in school. You know, oh, I don't like math. You know, I, you know, I let my accountant handle that. You know, no, nah, that doesn't cut it. You know, you got to take ownership, you know, of, of small business management of financial management in your business in, in order for you to maximize your, your potential for success. Now, I didn't say you have to be an accountant. Uh-uh, not what I'm saying at all. You can, you can hire accountants. You can, you can hire them. You can contract out for them. You can find people that can do excellent bookkeeping and accounting and financial reporting. What I'm talking about is learning how to understand financial statements and analyzing your financial statements and making them talk to you and tell you a story about strengths and weaknesses and opportunities for improvement. Uh, so if you take anything away from this workshop today, that might be your number one takeaway because it may be the most important thing that I say to you in the next hour, you know, is, 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 is don't opt out on this thing. You know, uh, it's not rocket science, it's stuff you can learn. Uh, I had a client one time uh, that attend, attended one of my workshops, uh, old site physical workshop, and this was about financial management stuff. And she came up to me at the end of the workshop, like kind of like Uncle Sam in the, in the, in the army recruitment, you know, uh, uh, a billboard, and he, she pointed her finger at me and she said, Lou, I want you, you know, as my score mentor. She said, because I understand the operation stuff and the, and, the, and, and, and the marketing and sales stuff and the human resources stuff, but I'm just awful you know, at, at, at financial management. I need your help. Uh, and I said, I'd be delighted to help you, Nikki. And, and we worked closely together uh, for probably two or three years, still work together. She's still a client. Uh, but she got so good at it. Uh, she's a franchise owner. Uh, of a residential cleaning service in Lancaster and, and, and Lebanon County. It's made pro, high-end, you know, residential cleaning service. She's so good at business financial management stuff now that when they have regional and national uh, uh, conferences for their franchisees from all over the United States, Nikki teaches this stuff now, you know. Uh, so, you know, it's not rocket science. You know, you can learn it if, if you set your mind to it, just like you can learn anything. So with that background, uh, let me plunge right into 
today's topic. And I want to start out sharing a document with you. Uh, it's this one for the moment. Uh, can you see that uh, Word document on your screen? Fred, can you see it? Shake your head if you can. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming everybody else can, can see the, the, the Word document as well. Uh, ex for discussion purposes, accept what I have written as, uh, as a good performance standard or, or premise. Uh, what I've said is that in the ideal world, every small business owner will number one, review his monthly and year to date financial results, financial reports by the 10th to the 12th of the month following the close of the prior month. So by July 10th, July 12th, he'll be reviewing June and June year to date financial reports from his accountant. Uh, and he will do that in consultation with his own accountant and or his financial mentor, it could be a score mentor. Uh, with the purpose uh, of doing a financial SWOT analysis, that is looking for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and finally establishing goals and action steps to ensure improvement you know, in, in key opportunities for, for better performance. Uh, that's ideal. Every owner of a small business does that by the 10th to the 12th of the month following the close of business. And he does it in consultation with his financial mentor. And th the reason for doing it is, is to make the numbers talk to him and tell him a story you know, about strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities for improvement. And then he establishes action steps to work on Im improving the, the, the key performance areas that he, that he sees you know, as, 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 as needing improvement. Why doesn't that happen? Now, everybody unmute yourself right now. Abby, you unmute everybody, okay? Uh, I want you to answer the question. What are the reasons that doesn't happen in every business every month? And, and, and let's, let's identify them together and, and figure out what we, could, what we could do to eliminate the reasons. Anybody got any thoughts? Time limitations. Tell me more, Chris. Uh, <clears throat> it uh, it takes uh, uh, a lot of time just to. My my son is is the one who owns the business, and I'm helping him out manage it. And uh, we find that uh, the reason for that is he, he just doesn't have the time. He's working all the time, um, doing doing his job. It's the number one response I get to this proposition. And, and, and maybe I'm not being, maybe I'm not giving as much milk of human kindness as I should. But my reaction to that, Chris, is everybody finds the time and makes the time to do what they want to do. You really do. I mean, if I, if I want to eat a bowl of ice cream, I make the time, I find the time to eat a bowl of ice cream. You know? uh, I want to play around the golf. I'll make the time. I find the time to do it. You know, and so yeah, I understand it. And we're all busy. You know, business life and personal life goes at the speed of light these days. It's a lot faster than it used to be, you know, 50 years ago. Uh, uh, but 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 if it's important, you know, people typically make the time. Uh, let me let, let me give you a corollary to your answer. Chris, uh, I grew up in the 1980s uh, when total quality management, I grew up in business among other years, 60s through the, through, through the 90s, uh, but in the 80s, total quality management was all the rage, okay, Armstrong and, and many companies around the world adopted the, the, the principles and the concepts of, of total quality management. Uh, which is process management, continuous process improvement. 
And, and a lot of the things I've learned and I've employed it f f constantly for the rest of my life is that, is that all processes have, have four controlling variables. You know, one, one variable that controls the quality of the process is policies, practices, and procedures. The second one is know-how. The third one is tools and equipment. And the fourth one is the performance standard. If you don't know what the performance standard is for a process, then you don't know whether the process is producing good output or not. So many, many, many business owners, in my experience, Chris, do not have this performance standard. They have not determined that I am going to review these results by the 10th to the 12th of the month following a closed business, period. That's what I'm going to do. I, there's no performance standard, so I'm not holding myself accountable. It's too loosey-goosey, you know. Uh, you know, I'll get to it when I can. That's not a performance standard. Uh, but you're right, Chris, it's time, 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 time. What else? What else stops people from doing it? Having a uh, reactive instead of proactive view of the process. T t tell me a little bit more about that. I'm not quite sure I understand it. So the, waiting until after the month end is closed to start reviewing uh, different uh, different key parts of the business. So account changes, uh, any accruals that need to be done, and any expenses in that area, making sure that you're aware of what's coming up and looking at them ahead of time to try to get that information done in a timely manner. Well, what can uh, you push back into the month? I you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're definitely hitting on a reason I think you are, you know, that, that's, that's well known to me. Uh, and it's simply this. Somebody in the business is preparing financial reports. That's either an internal part-time or full-time employee accountant, could even be the owner themselves, you know, or it's an external contracted out service. Uh, and that accountant comes to the owner and says, I got... I got five questions that I need answers to before I can close the books on June. You know, what is this expense for? What is this expense for? What was this money spent for? You know, what, what was this all about? What, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. G give me answers to all those questions, you know, and then I'll be able to close the books, you know, with an accurate, up-to-date, uh, full reporting of the operating results for, for June and year to date. And the, and the owner ignores them because he's too busy, Chris. Uh, you know, they, they don't get back to them on a timely basis, you know, or the accountant doesn't press the owner, you know, because it's a, he or she is afraid to bother the owner too much or the owner ignores it because I got better things to do. So what happens is that the time frame drifts, you know, the, the accountant doesn't produce the financial reports, you know, the owner doesn't answer the questions. Uh, the financial reports end up with a whole bunch of money in the expense category that's named, quote, ask my accountant, unquote, which means it's meaningless <laughs> information, you know, from a, from a management point of view. Uh, and the accountant doesn't have any fire lit under their butt to produce the reports, you know, uh, in time for a, a, a financial review on the 10th and the 12th, because they don't have a performance standard, you know, they, they haven't set themselves to do it. I remember very clearly uh, back in the 1980s uh, that the Armstrong management received financial reports from its accounting department about the 25th of the month following the close of business. And they set a performance standard that was going to be done by the 10th of the month, two weeks sooner. It took three years to get there. That's how hard it was, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, but ultimately, ultimately we did, you know, we got to the point that we were producing financial reports and giving them to management on a timely basis so that, so that people were looking at information on a timely basis, not a month after the, uh, the historical fact, which kind of gets worthless. What else? What other reasons? Uh, what comes up for me is, you know, some fear avoidance of actually, you know, really looking at the numbers. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's real. It really is real. It's, 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 it's OMG. Don't me, don't make me go there, you know, beat me with an ugly stick, but don't make me do that. You know, uh, you know, fear, fear and, and avoidance of what you don't know and what you don't understand. 
And, and I don't know how to counteract that except to say to people, understanding financial statements uh, and analyzing them and making them talk to you and, and, and tell you a story about strengths and weaknesses and opportunities of improvement. It's an art and a science and, and, and it takes practice. Uh, my analogy is it's like playing tennis. The first time you ever got onto a tennis court with a tennis racket in your hand, you didn't know what the hell you were doing, did you? I didn't, still don't for that matter, you know, but, but uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you could you could you could hardly hit the ball, much less get it back across the net. You know, and 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 if you got it back across the net, you didn't know what to do next. You know, the, the person returning it, you couldn't tell by their body angle or or their or the way they were approaching hitting the ball where it was going to go. You were standing there flat-footed. You know, and the ball sailed sailed beside you. Uh, you were awful. You couldn't serve the ball. You could hit a dinky shot over the net but maybe it wouldn't get into the court where you were aiming it you know but after you practice and practice and practice and did it and did it and did you know you start to get better at it. it's like like anything you know you start to get better at it. the same thing with business financial management so so uh fear of avoidance has to be addressed head on um uh and 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 and, and conquered by saying this is something that i can do Anything else hit anybody else? And those are all good ones. Um, that's good enough for my purposes right now. I've got a few others that I'm gonna add when we send out um, a, a recap to you f of this workshop. Uh, but th those are, are the important ones. And, and, and I would encourage everybody attending this workshop to say, I'm going to establish this as my as my performance standard for monthly business financial review and financial analysis. I'm going to do it exactly this way, and and uh, and, and try it for about six months and see how it works for you. See if it starts to make a difference in your understanding, you know, of your own information, uh, and 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 in your use of that information to help you focus on, on, on key uh, aspects of business management and improving your, your, your profitable performance. Uh, I have never worked in my almost 60 years in business with a client where they did that and came back to me and said, that was a waste of time, not one every single client I've ever worked with that has actually done what I'm encouraging you to do has come back and said, that's one of the best things I've ever done, you know, in, in disciplines I've ever imposed on myself in my, in my business financial management life. So enough preaching, maybe you're already converted, uh, but I would, I, I would strongly submit to you that, uh, uh, that you are, uh, uh, that you establish this performance standard for yourself in your own business. Now, uh, I want to turn to the dashboard. Um, but before putting it up, uh, one of the reasons this review doesn't happen, in my experience, that we didn't enumerate is um, because there's so much information to look at. I mean, you know, it's it's not unusual for somebody to see a PL report, an income and expense statement, a PL report of their business that's three or four pages long, you know, and a balance sheet that's three or four pages long. There's a huge array of numbers and data, you know, and, and, and a lot of times, you know, the chart of accounts for those financial reports aren't formatted in a way that that that, that gives owners the, the the key information they really need to see and understand in their business. And so I think you can be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information of the data and, and, and uh, you know, you, you can't see the forest for the trees because there's so much information. Uh, and and the, the, uh, the dashboard uh, concept uh, has been around for, 30 years or more. 
and is employed very, very much in, in large business, uh, but, but, but utilized much less in smaller business. And I just want to show you what it's all about. So let me share this first one with you. Bear with me a second. Can you see this Excel spreadsheet? Somebody let me know if you can. Yes. Yeah, good. Uh, this is a real business. Um, I, I titled it ABC Commercial Contracting Company. Well, it really is a, it really is a residential, uh, for the most part, remodeling and renovation contracting business. They do some light commercial business, but but it's, it's primarily residential. Uh, and, and they have their accountant prepare this one page dashboard report. That's why it's called dashboard. It's, it's, it's one page at a glance of key performance indicators that the owners review themselves with their accountant every single month. Uh, and and, and they, they do it religiously. Uh, and, and in this particular example, um, you will see that the first column of information is the month of June 2021 numbers compared to the same month last year. Uh, the third column of information is year to date. So it's six months year to date because this company is on a calendar year accounting basis compared to six months of the prior year. Uh, the next to last column is showing percentage changes from th this year to date versus last year to date, uh, comparing these two numbers to see what percentage changes there are. And the last one is, is benchmarks or goals or targets that the business has established for themselves as performance standard for key um, uh, processes in their business. Uh, you can see that the first part of this information is P&L information uh, summarized in, 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 in big lumps. Uh, further down the page, you know, is, is other information uh, like owner's compensation or accounts receivable, day sales outstanding or inventory number of months supply. Uh, and other financial statement information. And further down the page is some key performance indicators, KPIs that the owner have established for themselves because they want to measure and track what's going on, you know, and, and key performance indicators that are, that are uh, this information they want to review that's not, you know, PL and balance sheet information, but it's key performance indicators. Uh, and that's all it is. You can see how much data is there. It's one page, uh, you know, immediately, I don't know about you, immediately, you know, I, this is a lot easier for me to see and understand, you know, the, 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 the three page P&L information or three page balance sheet information, you know, where, where with, the, with the major documents, you know, I get me go, my eyes glaze over. Uh, I actually believe that, that monthly performance reports, PL reports, balance sheet, cash flow reports from accounting systems, QuickBooks, you know, uh, whatever else accounting system you might be using. I actually believe that it's raw material for analysis in an Excel spreadsheet. I believe the Excel spreadsheet's the most important business management tool ever invented. Uh, actually, I don't. I think the most important business management tool ever invented is the to-do list. Uh, but I think the second most important business management tool ever invented is the Excel spreadsheet. And, and, and financial statements are raw materials for Excel spreadsheet analysis. So uh, I could, I could, I could be Socratic now and ask each of you to tell me what you're seeing item by item here, but it might end up taking more time than we have in our, in our one hour minimum. And I might also crunch into question and answer time. 
So let me just tell you very quickly, you know, what I see when, when I look at this information. Number one, I see that sales in June were pretty darn good relative to June of the prior year. You know, they were up 20,000 bucks. And year to date, 458,000 versus 385 is up 19%. It's pretty, pretty, sounds pretty strong in terms of, of, uh, of sales results uh, for, for the year to date. And I could quickly see that gross profit margin uh, dollars in, in June was higher than June of last year, but the gross profit margin as a percent of sales is down slightly. Nothing to be terribly concerned about, but I've highlighted in red and I've put it all in yellow uh, because it's like a, a little caution there. You know, uh, For the year to date though, I'm overjoyed because my gross profit dollars are up 27% year on year with a 19% increase in sales. My gross profit margins percent of sales is 47.5% against 44.7% the prior year and my 45% standard. My eyes immediately say, wow, two and a half percentage points higher than my goal means 10,000 more dollars in gross profit margin. Uh, and I'm emphasizing this because uh, I often say to my clients, gross profit margin and gross profit margin of percent of sales is, quote, more important than your mother, unquote. Uh, it, it's the number one thing that you want to focus on and concentrate on in any business, because if you get gross profit margin right in your type of business, you generally can be successful by, by controlling your overhead expenses. But if, you, if you're out to lunch, you know, with regard to gross profit margin for your type of business, you're going to really struggle. I mean, if you're a if, 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 if you're a, a retailer and, 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 and your typical retailer margin is, is 35% of sales for the industry, you know, and you're running at 28%, you're gonna, you're gonna play hell, you know, trying to be successful because your margins are, are so much lower than the, the, than the industry norm. It's exceedingly difficult, you know, to get your overhead expense low enough to be, uh, to be substantially profitable. So you need to be hawking gross profit margin uh, constantly in, in any type of business. Also, I like to say gross profit margin is real money, sales or not. So sales are, the purpose of sales is to create gross profit. Gross profit you can use to pay overhead expenses. You can't pay overhead expenses with sales. You pay overhead expenses with gross profit margin. So that's the first thing I want to know about business. Second thing I want to know is overhead expenses. I call it overhead expense, operating expenses, general selling and admin expense that don't necessarily change with sales. Uh, you know, the, the cost of goods sold uh, that's subtracted from sales to create gross profit, that's, that varies directly with, with sales, goes up and down with sales, but operating expenses are, are pretty flat or only semi-variable. Rent expenses there, whether sales are good, bad, or indifferent, you know, rent's the same. Uh, as an example, so in this case, while my operating expenses are running higher than last year, uh, and a tad bit higher than, than, than goal, I'm still happy with them, and I gave them a green look, you know, I've got green here, meaning good, green here, meaning good, red here, over here, meaning look out what, what's, ha what's happened there maybe. And yellow may be, may be just highlighting important numbers. So operating expenses, I'm pretty happy with. A net profit uh, was good for the month for the year to date. It's really strong. You know, it's 50% higher than the prior year and, and, and three percentage points higher than the prior year and, and above my, uh, my, my benchmark. Uh, Cash flow, I'm not going to dwell on that a lot today. There are about three different definitions of cash flow. This one is so-called EBITDA, uh, EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Uh, and the key thing to understand about it is, is, the, is whether it's positive or negative and the extent to which it's positive or negative. And in the case of this guy, it, it, it's, it's strong for the year to date. Uh, I want to know how I'm doing relative to um, the prior year in terms of my own owner's compensation. Uh, and for this purpose, 
I, I show salaries plus profit distributions out of the business because many, many small business owners pay themselves X amount of money in terms of W-2 salary compensation <clears throat> and Y amount of money is simply profit distribution out of the business like a dividend. And so the money they really are taking out of the business is both salary plus profit distributions. Uh, some of the profit distribution can be to cover income taxes, you know, uh, quarterly income taxes, but the rest is for themselves. And so uh, profit distribution doesn't appear in the PL. It's a balance sheet in a, a transaction. But, but for, for my purposes, I want to see, see it combined with salaries because I can, I, I, can, I can mix and match what I want to do in terms of salary and, 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 and profit distribution. And in this case, you know, I'm paying myself $39,000 year to date through six months versus 33,000 the prior year. Uh, and I'm also seeing stockholders equity going up. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in a few minutes. This is accounts receivable day sales outstanding. I wanna know how fast I'm collecting my money. You know, it's uh, year to date, it's taking me on average 36 days to collect my money from owners and or general contractors. Uh, and, and that's good, you know, I, I probably should be giving that a green, you know, and, and instead of, I will, you know, uh, that, should, that, should be, that should be green, that's doing fine, except, oh, no, I'm not so sure, because it's not quite at my, at my performance standard level. I wanna be at 35 days. Uh, and, and, and so this might invite me uh, to look at my accounts receivable aging schedule and, and say, where, where, where's the slow pay and, and where do I need to focus my attention you know, on following up to collect money? I want to manage my inventory. So I'm looking at inventory number of months supply. Uh, and that's a calculation I won't get into, but, but, uh, but, but I don't want to have too little inventory and I don't want to have too much inventory because it's just tying up cash in that asset that I may need. I want to know how I'm paying my, my creditors. Accounts payable, days payables outstanding. I want to pay my creditors with an average of 25 days and I'm doing very well, 21 days. A lot better than I was last year uh, when I was at 46 days outstanding. Uh, and I'm looking at some other things like interest bearing debt. What are the levels of my interest bearing debt? Last year was 45,000, this year is 67,000, way up, but part of that's to finance the growth in my business. Uh, uh, I am interested in my return on stockholders equity or my return on investment. And I'm doing fantastically well this year. I mean, I'm looking at profit being 83% on return on my stockholders equity uh, versus a 50% standard. And then in, I, in the contracting business, am saying there, there's some key performance indicators I want to track and, and measure uh, that wouldn't necessarily apply to anybody else. They're unique to me. Uh, the biggest thing I want to know is how much money do I have in my backlog of so-called executory contracts? How much money do I have under contract to be executed in the future with firm contracts? Uh, and what is the es estimated gross profit margin, GPM, in this backlog? And how many months of overhead expenses is covered in contracts that I have available for execution in the future? And in this case, I got $625,000 of contracts to be estimated in the future with this much estimated gross profit, which will cover five months worth of my overhead expenses. My performance standard is six months. I want to ultimately get to six months as a performance and sustain it. Uh, and so I'm tracking that information with, with, with backlog records. Uh, and this is a summary of, the, of my backlog records and that's separate from the PL reports. And I also want to know how much retainage is outstanding in accounts receivable? That, that is when, 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 when people hold back a final payment from me until everything is completed in terms of punch list work. Uh, 
general contractors or owners, I, I, and, and, and sometimes it takes, it takes a lot longer than I would like it to for me to collect that final retainage on the contracts. I want to know what my retainage is in accounts receivable at all times. So uh, that is a classic example you know, of, a, of a financial statements dashboard. Uh, in the case of this particular client, they say to their internal accountant, who happens to be a contracted out service, not only do I want you to prepare the financial statements for my review by the 10th or the 12th of the following month, but I want you to spoon feed me this dashboard report. The accountant prepares it. Uh, and, and the accountant says, here's everything you need to know on one page. And, and what you're seeing may invite you to dig further back into the information but, but here are your key performance indicators and your dashboard at a glance, and it can be the basis of your review meeting uh, and, and then possibly digging back in further with things that you identify that you wanna see and understand more information. Uh, now, let me shut up for a minute and, and ask you guys, does this, make, does this make any sense to you? Do you, do you see any potential value to approaching your business financial performance review with a tool like this? Nobody? Unmute yourself if you got anything you want to say or want to share. Do, do, do you think this is doable or is this pie in the sky? Is this, is this, is this, is this, going beyond what most small business owners could really hope and or expect to do. What, what do you think? Well, if it's pulling data from, from the information you've already entered from somewhere and somewhere else, let's say QuickBooks and putting it in this form, I see uh, a great value in, in having this information that's really quick to see under one page in an Excel spreadsheet. It's not overwhelming, is it, Chris? No, it's not. Uh, and and I, you know, sometimes I'm too close to my own thinking that I can't easily put myself in other people's shoes. That's why I wanted your feedback. I, I just think it's, you know, I just think it's a lot easier if I'm a small business owner to, 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 to look at my information like this. And then, and only then, if I feel like I really need to, I can dig back further into the details. Otherwise, I don't even have to look at the, the financial details. You know, um, uh, if overhead expenses is running higher than I expected it to be, and, and I say to myself, well, the percent of sales is fine, but I got $25,000 more overhead expense than I, for the six months to date than I did last year. I want to know exactly where that is and whether or not there's something I need to, to focus on and, and, and work on improving, then I got to go back into the, the PL data. But otherwise, I don't bother. Uh, Lou? Yeah. Should this report show three months so that you can see a trend? You certainly can make it any way you want to, Jim. You know, I, I definitely have had clients in the past that have said, I want to see one month. I want to see the next block be a three month view, quarterly, quarterly view. And then the next column is year to date. And it could be 10 months year to date. But if it's, sep if it's October and I'm reviewing September, this could be September this year versus September last year, third quarter this year versus third quarter last year, and year to date, 10 months year to date this year versus last year. It's really what the owner thinks that they want to look at. Uh, uh, or uh, you could have month versus last year. You could have first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, 2021. Is that what you meant, Jim? Third, you know, quarter by quarter view? First quarter, second quarter, third quarter of 2021. And then you could have a 10 month year to date or nine month year to date view. Uh, and, and it, it might improve the value of the report for the owner, Jim. Uh, so it's a good question. 
Any other thoughts? With, with this report where you were looking at your operating or overhead expenses with a difference, I would think that if you gave your accountant or whoever was providing this report to you, uh, some parameters that if a certain variance is there, I'd like to see the key drivers, what expenses are driving that and pull Good them thought. out. Just those, the, those small areas. Good thought. Like if you had an extra purchase or repair for the month that was causing that expense to happen. So the key in real quickly, oh, we paid $10,000 to have our, our main truck repaired that month. Perfect. And that's what drove it. I like it. If you work that way with your accountant and you say to them, uh, you, you know that I'm going to ask X type of a question, so be prepared and anticipate it. I mean, you, you know that if I see operating expenses running $25,000 a year ahead of the prior year, I'm going to say why. And so it's going to be very helpful if you spoon, food me, spoon feed me the two or three reasons why because it probably is only two or three reasons. Uh, and so that could be part of the, the package or the supplementary package that the account is prepared to feed to you when you have your financial review. Save time, money, and provides focus. It's a good thought. Uh, in the interest of time, let me show you another one very quickly. Um, this is a bar restaurant business. Can you see it? Everybody, can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Chris, yes. you're shaking your head. You can see it. Okay. Uh, this is a real world business, too. So it's not fictitious information. Uh, this happens to be for the month of April and the four months year to date through April compared to the prior year. Uh, it's a very different looking um, uh, a dashboard report. Uh, in April of last year, this business was basically shut down due to COVID. Uh, you know, COVID really started clobbering us in, in March and March and April going into June, a lot of businesses in the bar restaurant business were just closed because based on government orders, governor orders. So they had a poor 900 bucks, you know, of of, of takeout business that particular month, you know, uh, last year because they weren't primarily a takeout business when they started, you know, they had a negative gross profit margin, you know, 200 bucks and their operating expenses were 18,000 and they lost $18,000 of, 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 uh, of, of operating loss in that particular month. <clears throat> April <clears throat> this year is a completely different story uh, because by April COVID uh, was was semi behind us, you know, and we were semi back to, to a pre-COVID normal, you know, beginning in April. So their sales were back up to $90,000. Uh, and, and the gross profit margin was 22% of sales, but still negative relative to their target of 30%. Uh, uh, and, and, and a big comeback uh, in sales year to date uh, up 18% versus the poor first four months of last year. Uh, but the gross profit margin is still suffering relative to uh, the, their norm of last year, which was close to 30% of sales. They still got a long way to go. Uh, um, they, they, they cut their operating expenses or held them down uh, uh, this year relative to last year but they're still not as low as they need to be relative to their norm, but they were very good you know, in, the, in the month of April. Uh, so their loss was dramatically cut relative to last year, uh, about the same for the year to date, but they're moving in the right direction. Their target is to do $110,000 a month. That's really where they're gonna make money, that level or above. Uh, other income represents grant you know, uh, and, 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 and supplementary aid income. Uh, such that with grand income for the bar restaurant business, they actually were profitable in April and profitable for the, for the year to date. Uh, in their particular case, uh, uh, one of the owners uh, 
uh, took a bit of a sabbatical and, and said, I will not take an owner's salary for six months. Uh, and so that's the reason the owner's compensation is down relative to the prior year and at the 10% of sales level, uh, which is which is a norm for, for the industry. 10% of sales of the bar restaurant business is a classic norm for owner's compensation in that type of a business. It's, a, it's, a, it's an industry metric uh, and one they're trying to shoot for to achieve. Uh, they know that if they can get sales up to 110, $120,000 a month, you know, uh, they could pay themselves a combination of, of uh, salaries and, and health insurance and profit distribution uh, that's equal to close to $100,000 a piece for the, for the owners, uh, which will be very, very comfortable. Uh, their interest-bearing debt is dramatically higher than it was a year ago because of EIDL loans, you know, the 30-year long-term SBA loan financing that they got, uh, which has been extremely helpful to them. So their, their debt to net worth ratio uh, is substantially higher than it was a year ago. But in terms of financial strength, they're more solid today than they were a year and a half ago because of extraordinary COVID financing. Uh, they, uh, in the type of business they're in, they say to themselves, I want to hawk. What is my direct labor expenses relative to sales? Direct labor, including taxes and temporary labor. Uh, I need that to be about 20% of sales. They got a long way to go to get that at the level they want it to be. The direct cost of food and drink as a percent of sales in, in their business and, and in the restaurant business as, a, as an industry norm needs to be about 50% of sales. They're doing well there. Uh, and and um, uh, I probably should change that to, to green, you know, uh, and, and I will because that, that's an excellent achievement uh, in terms of, of operating at 46.7% of sales relative to a 50% norm, slightly higher than a year ago because of unusual circumstances. And in their case, they want to make sure that the rent uh, and common area maintenance fees uh, are, are, are staying in line with what they, they think may be reasonable for their business because they've expanded their business in terms of physical footprint uh, at a substantial increase in rent uh, this year versus last year. And they want to be very careful that they're following that. So these are three things that they have said that are other KPIs that they want to follow in their business because they're extremely important to them. Other than that, uh, the P&L information, uh, the owner's compensation information, uh, the interest bearing debt, debt to net worth, return on stockholders equity, that's fairly standard you know, type of, of information that might appear on any typical uh, dashboard report and the other ones are specific to them. Do you see a little bit how the dashboard concept can be modified and tailored to fit any type of business? Uh, that's the reason I wanted you to see it. Uh, now we only have a few minutes left. I've introduced to you this tool uh, that, that I hope that you will consider uh, and, 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 and perhaps uh, uh, test out uh, using for your own business management processes. Are there any areas that we, that we should have talked about that we haven't hit that you wanna, that you wanna raise or question or, or, uh, or make a comment about? If so, please unmute yourself and, and shout out. Jim, anything you want to add? You're a score mentor, you know. Uh, uh, do you think you can use this with your clients and helping them help manage their business? I think that knowing that you've got some uh, national information, either from the small from the small business administration, that we can come to the financial mentors and say, "This is the type of business that we have. You know, what what are the benchmarks that are realistic for this type of business?" And you can go into the data and come up with that information. Yes, it's a good comment, Jim. Uh, a, a lot of small businesses don't know where to get 
industry norms, benchmarks for their types of business. We've got them at SCORE, don't we, Jim? You know, and, and it's one of the things that we can bring to the party you know, with our clients in terms of business financial management. Anything else hit you guys? Fred, are you still there? He may have ducked off because Fred Engel, because he's 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 seen this presentation a number of times. I've been following. I've been following. Yeah, I just wondered if there's anything else because you know this thing. Is there anything else that I should have touched on or covered that that you can think of that's appropriate to this subject that I've that I haven't thought to hit? I just think it's the idea that people should know, you know, what you is how you have to really dig into the facts and figures that you've already explained, you know, to have it within a short period of time. And I, I look when I was in business, I would have loved to have known about this or do it. So you can make a comparison year in, year out. So I think it's a, it's a great tool. Well, I will close guys by saying uh, two things. Number one, uh, if, if we at SCORE can help you and assist you uh, in your business management process, whatever it is, financial management or human resources or marketing sales, you name it, don't hesitate to contact us to set up a, a, a session with a mentor. Uh, we have over 70 active volunteers in our Lancaster 11 and SCORE chapter with a huge variety of backgrounds of, of business experience and expertise, and we're delighted to help you. And the other thing is uh, tell your friends and colleagues, you know, about this tool. Uh, if you think some of them, you know, could perhaps be helped by it and, and, and encourage them to come to SCORE for, for some, some guidance, some, some mentoring, some devil's advocate help and assistance. If we can help them, we'd be delighted to do it. So I hope you've, I hope you've gotten one or two things uh, out of this process and that you don't have indigestion by eating lunch at the same time that you've been listening to me pontificate. Uh, we're delighted that you've joined us and, 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 and hope that we'll see you again at a future Chamber SCORE uh, workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lou. This presentation was awesome. Um, just for everybody who is feverishly taking notes, I will be sending these documents out to you guys along with a copy of the recording. So you will have all of this for yourself that you can use, edit, whatever you want to do. Um, but thank you to Lou and thank you to our sponsor, PSECU, for sponsoring this series. We have another small business series coming up in August, and then they are going to be monthly throughout the rest of the year. So just keep an eye on the calendar. And thank you, everybody, for your attendance. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Lou. Abby. <laughs> have a great day, everyone. You bet. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.